Welcome to the abbreviated version of the Early Bird Brief for Wednesday, November 8, Inside D.C. Number one, Democrat lawmakers urge temporary protected status for Palestine. Senator Dick Durbin and Representative Pramila Jayapal are gathering signatures for a draft letter urging President Biden to designate the Palestinian territories for temporary protected status and deferred enforcement departure, DED. Why it matters. Granting temporary protected status to Palestinians on non-immigrant visas already in the U.S. could be setting up for a surge of refugees who would also have protected status once they reach the border. Screening a surge of refugees for ideological support for Hamas would be impossible if the Israeli-Palestine split on the left continues Palestinian refugees would likely join demonstrations and could potentially engage in terrorism if the Biden administration continues support for Israel. Biden's support among Arab and Muslim Americans has tanked in the last month, and this could be a low-risk way for Biden to make up some of that support ahead of 2024 elections. Number two, new FISA bill to include warrant requirement. The new draft version of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act reauthorization bill will include a new warrant requirement for FBI searches of the controversial Section 702 collections database. Why it matters. There's a bipartisan sentiment toward curtailing some of the abuses of Section 702 authority and database searches, making this bill likely to pass with a minimal change. Cell site simulators are used extensively by law enforcement and federal agencies to capture unique identifying data of cellular devices and only California has a warrant requirement for their use at the state level. Some cell site simulators go beyond collecting unique identifiers and geolocation data and can eavesdrop on cell phone calls and intercept text messages. Shifting to domestic. Number three, Deutsche Bank. The U.S. should already be in a recession. Deutsche Bank analysts wrote that the conference board's leading economic index, or LEI, which includes new manufacturing orders, new building permits, initial unemployment claims, and seven, hundred, several, seven other components has only been this low and this long during recessions. The White Matters, the conference board's LEI, has been a reliable recession indicator for nearly three decades, but the U.S. may avoid an officially declared recession in 2024 as trillions in unspent federal dollars should boost government spending and thereby gross domestic product. Even if the U.S. GDP were to fall, the National Bureau of Economic Research may feel political pressure to not officially announce a recession in a presidential election year. Number four, Democrats see a big win in yesterday's elections. Virginia Democrats, which already control the state Senate, flipped the state's House of Delegates yesterday, gaining a narrow four-seat majority in the House. Meanwhile, Kentucky's Democrat Governor Andy Beshear won re-election in a race that supporters said is an indicator of the country's mood heading into 2024. New Jersey's Ed Durr, a Republican who won a major upset victory over an incumbent Democrat in 21, lost his Senate seat to Democrat opponent John Berzicelli. Why it matters. Virginia and other off-year elections won by Democrat candidates might be a bellwether for the 2024 election, with abortion still mobilizing the Democrat base to the polls despite Americans' economic pain. Virginia Republicans were also facing an uphill battle to take the state Senate and keep the House of Delegates, with many Democrat candidates running unopposed. In New Jersey, Durr's comments earlier this year on abortion and his subsequent denial days before the election likely played a role in uh, Berzicelli's victory. Shifting to geostrategic issues, number five, gold and gold market shifting to China. China, the world's largest gold producer, has been stockpiling more gold for 11 consecutive months while trading volumes on the Shanghai Gold Exchange were trending up. China's official gold reserves, which are likely not the actual holdings, are 2.19 thousand tons, the fifth largest in the world. Why it matters. China's gold stockpile and decreased U.S. Treasury holdings reveal the country is slowly de-dollarizing. Western gold markets, which don't allow true price discovery, are incentivizing gold, global gold producer to transact on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Higher trade volume could eventually shift the global gold market to Shanghai and deal another blow to the U.S.-led financial system. Number six, Goldman Sachs, crypto's October market shift. October, or Uptober, 
is historically a strong month for Bitcoin BTC price performance. But this October may have signaled a change in the cryptocurrency market, according to Goldman Sachs analyst. Why does this matter? October may have been a turning point for Bitcoin. Long-term BTC holders remain bullish, which means that even less of the already capped BTC supply will be offered on crypto exchanges. Meanwhile, BTC demand is growing as the race is on for a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund or an ETF that would allow more people and institutions easy access to BTC exposure. Number seven, Israel plans on an indefinite control of Gaza. Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu said Israel will maintain full security responsibility for Gaza for an indefinite period after the war. Israeli officials emphasized they had no desire to govern Gaza following the end of the conflict. Israeli defense forces are reportedly destroying tunnel networks around Gaza City with explosives and have advanced to their declared southern Gaza limit of advance as of Tuesday. I would recommend you check out the uh, Early Bird Israel update at 1500 today by subscribing to the Early Bird for a more complete picture of this conflict. Why it matters. At some point, Iran will either enter the fight directly or severely damage its self-proclaimed status as the Palestinians' patron and protector. It remains unlikely that U.S. and U.N. pressure to implement a ceasefire in Gaza will succeed in the short term. And finally, number eight. Ukraine's Zelensky calls for unity after key general declares war a stalemate. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky called for unity and a halt to internal infighting following Ukrainian commander of the armed forces, General Valery Zalazhenyi, claim that the war had devolved into a stalemate. Zelensky rejected the general's statement, which appeared in an article in The Economist, and was described by his close advisors as strange and something that could play into the hands of Russia. Why does all this matter? Ukraine is beginning the process of disintegration as its much vaunted counteroffensive fails and Russian forces make gains ahead of a promised winter offensive. Zelensky's in a bind as Western patrons are increasingly recommending a negotiated stale settlement, a move Zelensky has rejected. Much of the Ukrainian defense and security establishment has been fired or is currently under investigation for corruption. A building conflict in the Middle East distracting Western governments that have kept Kiev alive throughout the conflict could prove the end of the Zelensky government. The U.S. untangling itself from a losing proxy war in Ukraine could shore up the U.S.'s ability to prepare for what could be an emerging World War III scenario, though it may be politically fatal for those that advocated on behalf of Kiev. That is the conclusion of the Early Bird Intelligence Brief for November 8. I encourage you to subscribe and get the full version by email, which includes gear reviews, uh, spy stories, tradecraft articles, and much more. Have a great day.